Hello and welcome to Affliction Sugarcoated, a podcast where we sugarcoat some of the world's so-called afflictions and rate its plausibility out of a scale of 1 to 5. I'm Minnie Kim and today we will be sugarcoating high expectations. Okay, so like generally speaking, high expectations are a normal part of life. Like everyone experiences it. We can't really stop it because I mean it's there. It's just a part of society. It's already baked into human biology and evolution, dare I say. And, I mean, it's obviously hard to keep up, right? I mean, if you have a job, if you have something, if you have to do something that you don't like, if you have to do something that you do like and you're actually good at it, obviously high expectations follow. And by the way, those of you who keep like, oh my god, I heard high expectations somewhere. The book is called Great Expectations. I don't know why I said that, but I said it, so it's there. Okay, and generally speaking, when you think of high expectations, it's bad. It's really, really bad, because uh, the, the definition of high expectation means that it's, like, high, right? So can't really follow it if it's that high especially for those like students who always seem to do everything that everyone asks them to do but they're also stressed yeah (laughs) so I think there are three types of students and yes I'm taking the example of students because I also am a student so yeah number one slackers number two students who work hard but like can't keep up those to those expectations and number three the smart ones who just always seems to keep going like we're in that midnight oil and think like speaking of which slackers they can't meet the expectations they they already don't have the expectations because once you just fail to meet them constantly no expectations follow after that. So after a while, like a year or, year or two, people forget about you. You're just the slacker and like no expectations for you. Hooray, but you know, they also have feelings. So, and I'm addressing them as they because I'm not a slacker. <laughs> and also, um, those who work hard and try to meet those expectations. Yeah. So half of them turn into slackers and half of them turn into the smart ones because like those students who actually want to follow those expectations. I mean, everyone wants to follow those expectations, right? No one like wants to disappoint anyone. I mean, that just doesn't make sense. Uh, And uh, half of them, they just don't know what to do. They get overwhelmed and they just turn into slackers and then no one expects anything of them ultimately and you just oh what can you do and then the other half turns into the smart ones because you just like keep working and humans are surprisingly very very dogmatic which means that if you're in a group i mean like a group a good robust group of people who know their stuff they can like they can change the world i mean i know it's cliche and everything but like the people can seriously change the world if they have the right people and they're at the right time it takes a certain amount of luck but yeah like you can uh, like legit change the world and those are the people who faced high expectations they managed to meet those expectations people expect higher and higher sometimes they break down i mean you, you gotta break down every now and then because like who exceeds expectations and never breaks down come on and we're like we're all human and then because of because the expectations get too high for them to actually be feasible they that i think that's normally when they kind of break down again <laughs> yeah but like seriously like doubt and contemplate life choices in that sense and that's the three types broken down into analyses okay so 
Christopher Millen, Miller, sorry, quoted, low expectations are the key to happiness in life. Generally, I disagree with that because neither nor, low nor high expectations like create happiness, right? I mean, expectations are toxic. Um, and like, think about it. If you had low expectations for yourself, then it obviously means that even though you do achieve those low expectations, you're not happy because you know it's low. And you're kind of offended that people set so low expectations for you. That's uh, kind of obvious. And society generally can't shun them because just like peer pressure, we follow the majority. I, I talked about this in my last episode, but like generally speaking, you can't really shun expectations because it's a, it's a part of your life. You can't avoid it. Like whether people publicly express it or it's just there in the air, like it's always going to be anywhere. It's always going to be in every scope of your life. And like even like family, you know, there's an expectation that people at their 30s, they have to start a family mm-hmm. and people follow that, um, whether that's based on perf- personal preference or just because of the expectations, people sometimes don't follow that. Um, It's ultimately your choice, but it's kind of hard to shun it, right? And this also closely connects to failure. And because, obviously, failure, if you don't meet those expectations, you fail. That's that's just the way it is. Um, Unfruitfulness, whether starting a family you didn't manage to do it, you fail. And you have those years where it's just terrible and you think it's not going to get any better because, oh, obviously, failure, bad. And expectations disappoint, generally, because high expectations, you can't meet them. Low expectations, you're offended. And I'm talking about expectations from society and expectations for yourself as well. Because a lot of people have high expectations for themselves as well. And that just leads to depression, right? Both ways. It can go wrong, seriously go wrong. But for me, my best days are when I meet people's expectations. And I'm talking about in school, like mostly academics, because I'm the kind of girl who focuses everything on academics but uh yeah i mean it feels good when people expect so high of you and then they read what you've worked on for like so many hours and then they say wow this was really good like beyond expectations and that that just makes your whole day obviously this also works with appearances i mean People who are listening, please do not focus too much on your appearance. Like, I get that it's important, but it's not, like, your entire life. It's not your identity, right? I mean, if that closely relates to yourself, and if that's what your expectations are about, I I can guarantee that if you meet those high expectations, you're good. Like, you feel good. And that just makes your day. And the worst days for me is when I don't meet those expectations. When I work on a project and the results, like the numerical results don't really correlate to what you, like the amount of time you spent, all the work that went in. And that's just kind of disappointing, which is obviously sad. But, well, you know, what can you do? So, yeah. Expectations are indeed toxic. They're hard, but they're rewarding, right? You can't really separate yourself from them. And it's like, don't try to, because that's just an impossible pursuit of perfection. And I get it. Oh, where's the irony? You're trying to reach perfection by meet, meet, like meeting those expectations. But you're trying to reach perfection by letting them not harm you. Like, choose one, mini. Okay, I'll choose one. Um, Generally speaking, I think 
trying to shun those expectations i mean that's good like that's genius who you like if someone can do that please tell me the way to do that but i mean i can guarantee that once in a while it can affect you it can get to you and it actually carves into you and it hurts right eventually it's it becomes too prominent in society to shun it now and it's left too much of a stain that's again baked into our biology of setting expectations for myself and like making myself follow the expectations of others right I mean, I've tried. I've tried to meet those expectations. I've tried to shun those expectations, but I've failed. So failure can go in two ways. Success can go in two ways. Eventually, I mean, the first choice of shunning those expectations in the first place, yes, that's the optimal choice because, I mean, you can't reach those expectations all day long, right? It's kind of impossible. You have to be a machine to do everything perfectly, and that's just not how humans function. You get this sort of feeling. Oh, I should have shown this. Why I shouldn't have listened to them. Everyone listens to them. Whoever them is. Them as in society. And it, it would be even more sad for you to... And tragic for you to actually look back and say, Oh, I shouldn't... I should have ignored this. Oh, I should have met those expectations. It can go so many way like wrong in so many ways and at this point i'd rather not talk about how like my failures reflect yet my identity and of course your failures do make up who you are your successes make up who you are those combined together that's that's just you that's your own psychology it's what you're made of but wouldn't a world wouldn't the world be so nice if everyone's psychology was made up with success wonderful right okay so sugar coating is artificial and i don't want to touch anything controversial i i don't want to create controversy this is a nice channel like nothing too serious i mean I only have like 10 people who listen to this. Uh but I think that this allows little less debate into the topic, right? The basic response is oh, expectations drive people. Like that's the very very basic of sugar coding. And I mean, it's not really artificial in that sense. Expectations do drive people. But it sometimes doesn't. It can break people. Like, life will implode for some people if they don't meet expectations. A.K.A. me. And, but people should be working hard for their own achievements and validation, not others. And, yeah, in that sense, let's focus on one side of the argument about how you try to shun those opinions from society. How you should be working for yourself, not others. I mean, obviously, try to uh, contribute to com the community, of course. But generally speaking, whenever you want to achieve something, well, you're in a diet, you want to get an A+, plus, you want to get into this college, or you want to get this job, you should work hard. You should grind, and you should stay up late. And you sh because that's the only way you can achieve it. No one in their right mind had all the success they want without working a minute. Like, that is impossible. Because are you, if you don't work hard, unless you're like this extremely lucky person, like the luckiest person in the whole world, I'm pretty sure there's like one lucky person in the whole world who just inherited everything from their daddy and they're just, like, for some reason, business is booming and I'll never understand them. Like, how? How? <laughs> but we're not talking about them. We're talking about you and me and I'm not that lucky. 
yeah, whenever you want to achieve something, you should do you should do it for yourself, not others. That's just disgusting. And I know I'm calling everyone, including me, disgusting right now. But try to. Whenever you try to achieve something, you should do it for your own validation. That final touch of validation, that should be for you. Right? And that's the most basic thing. The second sugar coding idea is that we all want to have good days, right? This focuses on the second part of the argument about how, oh, we can't shun their opinions, so at least we'll try to, you know, reach those high expectations. Society shapes us, uh, shapes what is or what isn't a good day. I mean, yes, you get to do that, but generally when when your car crashes or you have a flat tire, that's not really a good day. We can all agree on that. And we all want ourselves to be happy and productive, and that is really hard to achieve. Uh, some days you just wake up and say, like, like, I mean, there are days when I just wake up and say, oh, I am going to crush this day. Like, I am feeling too good. I, I just, I'm fueling myself. And at the end of the day, when I go to sleep, I say, yes, this day was amazing. But some days I wake up and the world is literally on me. I cannot lift a feather. It is just impossible to wake up, and you just want to lie down and watch Netflix all day. Like, seriously. But we all want ourselves to be happy, right? And what we can do is use this opportunity to, A, drive yourself to work harder, and B, reach society's expectations and have a good day. It may be artificial, but it's better than nothing, right? It's obviously better than, oh, there are no expectations. My life feels meaningless. Come to think of it, that's kind of the world where we'll be heading to without expectations. But let's just not focus on that right now. Um, it may be artificial. Yes, of course. You're doing it for others. You didn't even meet your own expectations. Why would you be happy? Well, human emotions, they're, they're a brilliant thing. They give us exhilaration that we have never felt before. And it is just amazing stuff. That is good stuff. Whenever you want to add paint to, like, a basic plain, you know, canvas, meeting expectations, that's the way to do it. There are bad days, of course, but at the end of the day, what really matters is if you feel happy with yourself. And yes, of course, if you want, if you fail to do the two things, oh, I can't shun their opinions, and I can't really do anything about it. I fail to meet their expectations. Sometimes you do meet those expectations. If your own expectations can't do that, a good good old compliment from others can't hurt. Obviously. Makes you feel good. And I for one would like to have a good day, even if it's through the toxic claims of others. I mean if they're talking really bad about me behind my back, at least I want to prove them wrong, right? meet their low expectations and exceed them so that they st like give me high st higher standards next time. That's what I want. Escaping from that low expectation area, that's, that's a good thing. That makes you happy. Donald L. Hicks, a day is a day. It's just a me measurement of time. Whether it's a good day or a bad day, is up to you. It's all a matter of perception. And he is right. He is very, very correct. I want a good day, no matter what. Yeah. And I agree with him on the matter that it is truly up to you. It's a matter of perception. It doesn't matter if you go and look in the mirror and your mom says, oh, uh, you don't look too good. But 
if you feel good inside, that's that's really what matters. Cause who cares what they say? Who cares what society keeps pressuring on you? What they beat you up for? It's all just plastic, right? And sometimes you just gotta reach those expectations, because you can't. I know I said that humanity can do anything, but surprisingly, humanity can't defeat themselves. Whether it's through war, whether it's through disease, we cannot seem to beat our own habits. And the best you can do is just run along with it. I give the share coding of high expectations before. This podcast was written and produced by me, Manny Kim. If you have any comments or reviews, please feel free to write any and all thoughts on your podcast reviews. I mean, like, literally anywhere you can write them. And if you have any questions or would like to suggest an affliction for me to share code, please email me via afflictionssugarcoated at gmail.com. Again, that's afflictionssugarcoated at gmail.com. A good e- a good email would really help, or a good comment, like any comment at all, like seriously. And I hope you had a nice time, and I will be back next month.